Hi, hello and welcome. And today I want to talk about a guy called Robert Koch. Robert Koch, that's his picture here. He is considered to be one of the founding fathers of modern bacteriology. And I not only want to talk about his achievements and what he discovered um, and his contributions, but I also want to show you his microscope that I happened to see a few months ago. Now, Robert Koch is considered to be one of the big figures um, of uh, modern microbiology because um, he's made several discoveries and you judge whether these discoveries are important. He, for example, he identified the causing agent of tuberculosis, cholera, anthrax, and he also worked with malaria. And I think that's pretty important. How important is that? As a matter of fact, it's so important that they have actually now renamed some time ago um, an institute in Germany and they call it now the Robert Koch Institute. And that is uh, responsible. It's a government institute, an independent government institute, which is uh, giving public advice uh, concerning infectious diseases. It's a little bit like the Center um, of Disease Control in the United States, the CDC. And uh, Robert Koch himself, uh, um, he won the Nobel Prize in, for Physiology in the year 1905. Yeah, and he is uh, best known probably also because of the so-called the Forrest Cox postulates. And I'm going to explain this to you now because uh, this is actually quite fascinating. First of all, you have to understand that uh, people have known for a very long time that bacteria and microorganisms exist. Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, he discovered uh, bacteria using his single lens microscope. So we always, always have known, not always, but for a very long time it's been known that bacteria are around. Um, however, uh, what they did not know the people is, is that bacteria actually um, are able to cause diseases and Robert Koch, Robert Koch he was the guy who actually came up with an experiment to prove that bacteria are able to cause diseases so what did the people think before well the people thought before well if you have um, an animal or a person who's ill and then if you have a second person next to this uh, then the other person or the animal will also become ill and why is that well they kind of thought well because the air is kind of bad it kind of it's kind of the bad air well they were not completely wrong with that that many bacteria are able to spread over the air no question about that um, but uh, what they did not know yet is that actually the bacteria that caused that and Robert Koch he came up with a system to actually experimentally prove that and what he said is the following he said it's not not enough to simply uh, identify bacteria from an ill organism that does not is not a proof that the uh, bacteria actually make the organism ill okay that's not a proof um, and if you put a second organism in contact with the first one and the second one also becomes ill and now also carries these bacteria that's also no proof why not well maybe could it not be that the bacteria are kind of a side effect um, of the disease that something else actually caused the disease and the bacteria are only a side effect it's a little bit like the question between correlation and causation you see just because um, I don't know I'm gonna think of a very stupid example right now uh, okay I'm married I've got a wedding ring here right you see this okay it's a wedding ring um, you, you know most people who are married have a wedding ring but you see a wedding ring doesn't make you married you know it just just if, if you put a wedding ring on my, your finger here, it does not make, this alone does not make you married, right? It's simply a byproduct. Yeah? It's correlated with marriage, but it does not cause marriage to happen, okay? So putting a ring on your finger does not be, make you married, okay? And, and what a strange comparison really to bacteria. <laughs> but that's essentially his reasoning. And um, so he came up uh, with a system to actually prove that bacteria are um, responsible. And what he said is the following is, is you gotta find a microorganism in the ill animal, in most of the ill animals. And, and then what you have to be able to do is you gotta, you, you gotta be able to isolate uh, this uh, bacterium um, and you have to grow it in culture and in, in pure culture. What this means is, is you have to be able to grow this bacterium, this microorganism, outside of the animal. Okay, um, and what he did, what uh, Robert Koch did, he is he used potato slices initially. So he sliced potatoes and he grew bacteria on the potato slices. Uh, it was not so good. Um, and so later on, he switched uh, over to what we now know, uh, even use nowadays, to so-called agar uh, petri dishes, agar plates. Um, and uh, then, when you're able to grow them in pure culture, um, and then when you take an, a healthy animal, and then when you transfer the bacteria into the healthy animal. Um, then the healthy animal should also become ill and that's not enough. Uh, the bacteria actually have to be able to reproduce on this uh, animal which then becomes ill. 
Okay, um, so essentially uh, he, what he said is, is you have to be able to transfer the disease causing agent, the bacteria, without the two organisms being in contact with each other. Okay, and he said that uh, if you're able to do that, then you have a definite proof that this uh, bacterium um, is able to cause a specific disease. Just putting two animals together and so that one becomes infected by the other is really not enough, he said. Okay, so that is uh, basically um, his, uh, these are the so-called so -so -so force Cox postulates. You have to find the bacterium in, in, in most ill organisms and not in healthy ones. You have to be able to get it from the organism and you have to be able to transfer it into pure culture. The second one, the third one is, is you have to be able to infect um, a healthy organism, which then also becomes ill. And number four, this uh, fourth postulate is, is that the bacteria have to be able to grow on their own now in uh, the second organism as well. And uh, by having following this procedure, you can determine whether um, a certain bacterium or microorganism is able to cause a, a disease. And essentially, it makes sense if you think about that. But at that time, um, you have to understand uh, many of these things were simply not known yet. Okay, and so now this uh, basically brings me now uh, to malaria, um, and uh, this is where it's getting a little bit uh, insofar interesting because last uh, summer, a couple of months ago, I visited. Uh, I was on holiday and I visited Croatia, and there is a nice island there called Brioni, uh, Brioni, um, and on this island uh, there was uh, privately owned many years ago. Um, in, the, in the 19th century and um, it was like this that at that time there was malaria there and the owner of the island he uh, knew, heard about Robert Koch and he um, wrote him a letter and called him called him up um, and called him up I don't think the telephones were around yet <laughs> but he wrote him probably a letter and uh, then uh, and said can you please uh, come to my island and investigate this place because there's a malaria what shall I do okay I we'll want to get rid of the, the malaria so Robert Koch came and he actually spent there I think in the year 1900 around or 1901 one. Uh, he spent a year there and he did research, malaria research, um, and uh, probably not alone, probably he took along a whole team of, of people uh, doing the research. And uh, he was able to give the following suggestion to the owner there. He said, what you got to do is, is you got to dry out all of the swamps there. Okay, there, was, there were lots of swamps and then lakes there. Um, and this was, of course, the breeding place uh, for mosquitoes. And so Robert Koch gave the recommendation to dry out everything and after they have done that, indeed, malaria disappeared because you've uh, eliminated the vector, the vector being the mosquito, which was able to carry the, uh, the disease, the, the malaria the parasite. OK, so in that sense, um, the island was basically saved uh, by Robert Koch. And for this reason, they dedicated a room in his museum, in this museum to him. Um, and uh, I visited this museum and I was able to actually see one of Robert Koch's microscopes there. And uh, I'm just going to show you a picture now. Um, and uh, there was also um, there a um, on the outside uh, there was also a little a walkway in the path uh, where you could go um, and uh, on this pathway it's called the Robert Koch trail because there was also a little memorial place there um, which kind of uh, was erected to, to thank Robert Koch for having eradicated and liberated um, the, the island from from malaria uh, the, and the tour guide told us that the young lady that you see um, in, in the monument that is should, should represent Present the island, uh, saying thank you to Robert Koch. So you see that it's, it's pretty important. Public health and all these issues are pretty important. Um, and Robert Koch, uh, he significantly contributed to that. But uh, I also have to mention that uh, probably uh, this achievement was also only possible uh, because at the same time, there was also, of course, a strong development in technology. Um, so for example, microscopy and so on uh, also developed at that time. Well, I think uh, for right now, I think this should be enough. I hope that you liked this. Uh, it's uh, one of the first videos, still a new channel. If you liked it, do support the channel by subscribing to it. I wish you all the best and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.